Hey all, Binks here. Today we booted up a deck that we thought would be a little bit of fun, a little meme really swingy, but it ended up being our highest cube rate deck of the entire season. Introducing Negative Jane Foster. The goal of this deck is to have a kind of like simple early game where we can play low cost cards like Katie Pride, Fast, Angela, get them out onto the field with the goal of getting a Mr. Negative played either on turn four uh, or on turn three. Now, what Mr. Negative is going to do is going to swap the power and cost of all the cards in your deck. And what you'll notice is that almost every single card, so eight total cards, have zero power. We want to just have as many as possible because the way that we're going to get these huge swingy games by playing Mr. Negative on three or four and then playing Jane on turn five to flood our hand with zero cost cards and then dump everything at the very end of the game. Uh, now, this deck is really kind of feast or famine. If you're missing your Mr. Negative, if you're missing your Jane Foster, it can be a little bit weak. Uh, it's really tough against matchups like Sandman or when someone plays Wave on turn five. Uh, but if you're expecting Wave or Sandman on turn five or, or early, just try and dump your hand as much as possible and try and get out over the top. Uh, this deck just went insane. Uh, we were getting huge cube wins. Uh, we gained 76 cubes, so almost 11 ranks over three hours. Uh, we hit 150 which is our highest that we've ever been uh morph was like a random superstar i just kind of added this late because i wanted to have a little bit of fun but playing him on curve he was getting like seven eight power almost every single time i think that Morf is super underrated right now plus it can flip and be played for free if we do get mr negative on it uh this deck is an absolute banger now you have to be really really patient i would recommend snapping if you have either the combination of zabu or mr negative in your hand or if you have mr negative and thor uh unless you have some indication that they might have a sandman coming down or they're pretty clearly a wave deck always be snapping there and try and bait your opponent into these big 8q games at the very end where you just put crazy amounts of power i mean you'll you'll see there's 80 90 100 power turns that, that are going to come in the the, the highlights ahead uh, super super fun deck i think this is really well placed on ladder right now definitely not a conquest deck once your opponent knows what's happening they'll just kind of uh, let you get your one or two cube wins when you get your combos and then kind of kind of squeeze you out for one or two cubes uh, but if you're still having a lot of fun on the ladder i think you can absolutely climb with this deck right now uh, it's super super fun you just have to be patient and bait your opponent but this deck is a blast uh, i'm gonna put the stats up right there but yeah like one and a half cubes Cubes per game over 50 games uh, absolute superstar deck and i hope you enjoy it on the ladder as always if you're enjoying this content make sure to hit the like button check down below make sure you subscribe and catch you live either here on youtube or at twitch.tv slash banks underscore place enjoy you peace we'll go zabu into negative maybe play morph kitty and then jane foster on five for full fill One, two, three, four, none your business street, Chicago. So true. What is the Josh Allen scurry going on Skelly? Not until the Bears are out of the playoffs and only the... Eh. I guess I should have Zabu'd middle. That was a misplay. I definitely should have Zabu'd middle just to get another Hulk. Just if he feels the truth or not. Uh, I think he's a great player. I think that um, he's one of the best running quarterbacks uh, that the game has seen in a really long time. Uh, I'm really excited to see what he does and see how he progresses. I think that last year was really, he did very, very well given uh, a pretty, pretty rough uh, thing around him. But he added uh, DJ Moore, who's in my opinion, like the most underrated wide receiver in the NFL. Am I mad about the Arlington Heights move? No, I think it's probably smart. Uh, uh, the, like, Soldier Field's beautiful. I, I like Soldier Field, but it's a bit, um, it's in a bit of a rough spot. Zabu Ray was genius? Yeah, now it looks genius. Now it looks genius. I love when I love when my opponent makes plays that make me look good. It's always my favorite. I don't know why they have Psylocke and Storm in the same deck. It's very weird. I don't know what they're cooking. What do we get? Big Morph. 
Big morph. Yo, we got our negative. We got our Jane Foster. Thank you. Thank you. What a homie. The opponent is an insane homie. Uh, do we play around wave here? We probably play around wave, right? I think we just go psycho mode this turn. We definitely play around wave here. I think you have to play around wave with this deck if you get the opportunity. Because this deck is dumpster by wave. But uh, if we could just do this, I, I think we're going to be in a good spot. <laughs> Point to turn five. It's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Jane Foster morph is crazy. Monkey. Casual 58 power left. Now this does get whooped by Enchantress, so I think we just go all in right. I think we just go all in right here. Yeah, GG's. Bit much left. Well, it's getting minus one per turn. We had to we had to cover our bases, chat. There's plenty of good things that can happen here. Didn't even have to play the Kitty Pride, man. Uh, we're gonna snap. We have our perfect line. Chain Foster and Thor. Uh, as long as we don't get waved, we should be fine. Where was I yesterday? Uh, I was drunk and at the zoo. Where were you yesterday? No, I didn't see the T-Rexburg. No, no. I don't live in Tampa. I live in Chicago. Um, T-Rexburg is in the Tampa Zoo. I'm going to go see that in August. I did reach out and send several emails to them, trying to see if I can uh, get up, in close, up close and personal to the bird. I don't know if they're going to let me. Might be the right call on their part, yeah. Who knows? Man, they went all in, huh? Uh, if they wave here, we're crushed, but I... I don't know how they would play... I don't know why they would play a wave in this deck. That'd be crazy. The shoe build stork. What was your pitch to see the bird? I'll pay you money to let me see the bird. That was the pitch. Can the morph ever be like bad? I think the morph isn't ever that bad. Oh, I guess we play the kitty instead of the morph, right? Ah, they thought they could win with the Mr. Fantastic. This is why, chat. You just have to take your losses. Yeah, you just gotta take your you just gotta take your losses when you're facing a deck like like my deck. Like you can't reasonably expect to win this game, even if you have a sneaky Mister Fantastic to go middle. Like look at look at my power output. When when you play someone who plays negative in the Jane Foster, always retreat. This if if you want to learn something about this deck, you just always retreat when this happens. There's no reason to stand. You will always lose. 
Unless you have like some, unless they somehow get like priority and you have a weird counter, uh, you will always lose. <laughs> uh, I don't really like playing uh, Hit Monkey for Psylocke personally. I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah, I mean, they just changed all my zero cost cards to negative one. I'm very happy with that. I think this is bad play. The morph doesn't even matter if it's negative one. We have Onslaught Citadel. Yeah, we're gonna pop off. The Electro Screw you? Yeah, it's tough. The Morphed Electro is not, not ideal, for sure. Alright, they're gonna play a Double Dinosaur right, but we should be able to beat it still. Um, Yeah, we'll go here. They shouldn't be able to beat us left. We're, we're happy with our snap. Uh, we have negative cards coming. We're, we're gonna be okay. Pretty hard to run Enchantress in a dinosaur deck. Unless we're negativing into Oh dude, we're we're going we're going off. Um, could they have wave? Could they have wave chat? It's like the only thing that he's scared of, I think, right now. Could they have wave? Could they have wave? Could they have wave? I find it hard to believe. Why do they have Human Torch in their deck? Oh, it's Agent 13 card. Looks like Cerebro 2 with a double dinosaur in their deck. That'd be kind of crazy. I don't think they have wave, man. Aren't it mid before Iron Man? Why wouldn't I want the Iron Man to get the triggers? Oh, because for uh, set up for Mystique. I kind of want to try and bait them into staying. I'd rather bait them into AQs. I'm not worried about wave. They don't have wave. They don't have wave. Yeah. I don't have to be worried about wave. Card's not real. three cards in deck this will be a decent bit we have double onslaught citadel coming right i think they're gonna push for right maybe do here 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 are we scared we're not getting enough power right It's 11, it's like, it's like 40. I think we're fine. I want to play around everything, you know? Yeah, thank you for the cubes. Thank you. Oh, very scary. We, we still went all three lanes. Interesting idea, though, to go for the claw. I was not expecting that. I will, t I will tell you what. We could technically still win middle, I think, if we get a lot of middle triggers. Yeah, this this is kind of like the whole cornerstone of the deck, right? Yeah, this is why you always want to take every lane. You want to win every lane by a shit ton with this deck. That's that's kind of the goal. It's a half-bait caster, by the way. But this just kind of shows, this is what you want to do. You want to bait them into these AQ games. We want to give your opponent, we want to give your opponent some some level of, of luck. Is this a good deck for infinite? You can climb with this deck for sure. You can. You've always been able to climb with Jane Foster negative. The problem is, it's like the Hella deck. It's like a Hella deck where you're gonna probably have a negative win rate. Your win rate's probably gonna be somewhere bet somewhere around forty five percent if you're if you're playing it well. But the whole goal is to maximize your cube rate to get big wins like that. Bait them into these big eight cube games. Where they kind of get this sunk cost fallacy they're like oh okay you know we'll trick them with the claw and then you just slam down like 80 power in the final turn it's I wonder if the best is bad I, I still don't know i think that whenever we're playing jane foster we're just winning anyway 
But I think the best is still good. If that makes sense. You could probably be greedy and play it. Wait one more turn though. Ah, we'll just play it now. Towards the current product, not really. I've tried my hand at watching a little bit of AEW, but um, I just don't have the time to keep up with stuff like wrestling. It's just there's, there's too much going on all the time. You're a Jeff Hardy guy? Jeff Hardy rocks, dude. Cool guy. Best moment was when Triple H hit Fisco's man in the head with the bedpan. They would beat they would just beat the shit out of Vince McMahon all the time. Freaking hilarious. Look at how much the opponent paid for this uh, 3x value Darkhawk check. I did not like the weird roam. Got in that hand, buddy. Okay. The Captain Marvel there is actually very nice. Missing our negative again. I'll just play Darkhawk right. Could be enough. If it's not, the Captain Mar Marvel can run. All good things. Hmm. Mr. Negative is not good with rocks in the deck. I don't think it's worth. They literally can't play on Vibranium or, or they just give us the win, right? It's kind of crazy. What two archetypes do you like combining together in a deck the most? Oh, they play Jeff over here? Cheater? They can't play here. How many cards are in my deck? I have four cards in my deck? If they play the Dark Hawk left, it's eight. They can move here, though. They're gonna move the Jeff here. No, but they move the Jeff here, they lose right. They're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Oh, yeah, they don't have a Hawk. Great point. So I can play there. Play middle. Play middle, you piece. Nice. Ooh, not nice. Bad. Captain Marvel. Win me the game. Thank you. Thank you, my queen! More for the win! Four tickets, you should def win at least one of them. Base Toby, I don't know if you know this. But there are five rounds in negative con in Infinite Conquest. Every round there's one winner and one loser. By that math, if you're an if you're an average player, one, one out of 32 runs makes it to the finish line. One out of 32 runs makes it to the finish line, Base Toby. So, if you consider yourself a very good player, maybe maybe you'd hope so, but uh, I feel like people really, like they see a bunch of people on like Twitter and like people who play all the time, like getting it, it's, not, it's a very not easy thing to, to, to do. It's very not good. I, do, I don't think that I will ever get it on the first try again. I think it'll take me many, many tries if I do it again. Oh, if that hit the negative, I would cry. But basting their scorpion feels great. No miniaturized lab is dumb. I should have played the best there, probably. My favorite candy? This is my favorite candy. Uh, I like Reese's a lot. Ooh, if they don't Jane Foster this turn, or Morph could hit Jane Foster. That's pretty exciting. Morph Jane Foster chat? Morph Jane Foster one time? They could play it this turn though. Okay, they either get a Darkhawk or an Iron Man. Morph Jane Foster one time. No, we have an Odin coming. Either just play the Darkhawk or the Iron Man. Hold our worst Mr. Worst Mr. Negative draw. 
I think we can play the Darkhawk out here pretty pretty happily. I don't think we I don't think it's worth it to play the Zabu KD this turn. Never gonna beat Infinite Conquest? Um I mean that's that I, I wouldn't say that. I think with enough tries, it'd be almost impossible for you not to. It's very hard though. It's very hard. I, I got really lucky. I got a DC my second game, so I only had to win four. Uh, only having to win four made it a lot, a lot easier. Uh, this is hard for them to beat us, right? You know if they Mjolnir Odin, they add 12. Wait. They're gonna Mjolnir Odin. They're gonna Mjolnir Odin. Mjolnir Odin gets this to... Maybe I give here. They're gonna Mjolnir Odin. We win with this all, all day. They're gonna think that Mjolnir Odin's enough, but it's not. We're gonna 18 right. Yeah. Nice meal on your Odin, your piece. Very well played. Very well played, top to bottom. Only winning four makes it exactly 20% easier. Um, It makes it twice as easy, right? It makes it twice as easy, right? I, I don't know. I, if you consider each one like a 50-50, you consider each one like a 50 50 then it makes it twice as easy right it's one in 16 to win four one in 32 to win five it makes it twice as easy it's a nice pass on one let's me play pretty maybe i should have put the angela left this is fine though a decent starting hand not too shabby can't complain next turn we'll go angela kitty Obviously, negative in hand is much better. Negative and chain foster is really good. I don't want to kitty la right yet, but we will kitty right eventually. Dude, what's going on? Like, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of spectrum lists. That's like kind of shocking. I think Spectrum lists have always been very rare. No morph left. We need to start filling Mojo World. No time like the present, as they say. At the Colossus. We're gonna try and throw right. I think we do this and then go like kitty kitty hit monkey next turn. You should be fine. Claw! Very scary. They just have to play around their spectrum. I don't think they can realistically destroy her here. They just have to play around their spectrum. I think this beats spectrum all day, right? Adding 13 middle, going to 24. The Spectrum, if they do anything right, they're losing the Warpath lane. I don't think we ever lose left dumping this much power here. 
It's what, 11, 20, go to 24. Wait, actually, wait, their spectrum left is kind of scary, huh? Spectrum left adds three, five. This is if they still win middle, which they don't win middle if they do this. Spectrum left gets them to 21 here. We have to beat with this. Spectrum left is a 5, 11, 14 power play gets into 27. This doesn't get over 27, but if they Spectrum left, then we win middle and then we get up to 6 points swing. We're fine. To beat Spectrum middle, beat Spectrum left. They go right! That's crazy. But this should mean that we're going to win middle and left, so we're fine. <sighs> solid game. Very solid game. A lot of Spectrum decks today. I, I haven't seen a Spectrum deck in a really long time. I just get this hit. Uh, maybe the Hitmonkey can go kind of hard with negative, right? Hitmonkey goes kind of crazy towards the end of the game. Pound for Pound West, Wasp is the best card, infinite value. Well, isn't Yellow Jacket because it's double infinite value? Doesn't Yellow Jacket have 2x infinity? You ever just wish you could snap more? Yeah. Now I wish I would have played the Hitmonkey out. Phone snaps. All right, buddy. <laughs> Let's see what you can do, bud. I love when opponents snap against me when I'm playing about to play Mr. Negative and a Jane Foster. Uh, we do have to worry about wave because these decks sometimes run wave. Not super often. But it does happen occasionally. H.E. Wasp makes you mad even though it shouldn't. Watching them zap my cards. Uh, yeah, I mean, H.E. Wasp is really, really strong. Kind of the reason to play it, right? Spider-Man, right? It happened. We'll have to hope for like an Iron Man or something. I think you're right. I think they're setting up a Spider-Man, Spider-Man, right? But can we beat it? Probably not. But maybe. Like, potentially, if they play HE Hulk right, we can get more power than an HE Hulk middle and left. Potentially. Uh, so, chat. On four, they played Psych High Evolutionary. They've only... They've only uh, banked one turn, so it's 14 power. So what we need to do, Chad, is we need to develop 14 power. Oh, and we just should be able to, right? With the uh, Iron Man, this, this Iron Man here. Oh, dude, we're gonna crush them. They're they're gonna think they're so freaking smart. <laughs> they're gonna think they're so damn smart, Chad. We are gonna eviscerate them. <laughs> it's gonna feel great. One, two, three, four, five. Probably, opponent's probably so happy right now. They're probably really stoked, yeah. I am Iron Man. I am Iron Man. And we got the Doom in the Nexus. Let's go. <laughs> wow, very close opponent. Opponent was so close, chat. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Chat, just, chat, just retreat when they play negative and, <laughs> just retreat when they play negative and uh, Jane Foster, man. Just retreat. It's not worth it, chat. It ain't worth it, man. <laughs> Let's go, 150, dude. Holy! We did, we did almost a whole lap across the infinite, uh, across the infinite ladder, man. Dude, raising the new heights. I raised my um, I raised my all-time high by thirteen uh, so far this season. That's really really cool. Hey, 
make sure to subscribe. Watch that one too.